Hey, Nelson, alcoholic addict. It's not my real name. I use a pen name here at LOL Sober. I wanted to talk today about managing chronic pain and sobriety, which are two things I always thought did not go well together. Uh, but I, I want that to be the biggest message today, which is that it is doable. I can say first uh, hand in my life, I have figured out a way uh, to manage my pain and be sober. And so uh, it started for me when I was in college. I had a freak illness, almost killed me. I spent a week in a coma. And when I woke up, I was lucky to be alive, but I was also pretty terrified. I, I knew that I would never be the same. And my doctors, they did the best they could to save my feet, but the, the damage was horrific. I ended up losing the ends of both feet, which means I had all 10 toes amputated. I went from a size 12 foot down to a size 4 and uh, I basically had the same size foot at that point as I did when I was in kindergarten. But I was a 22-year-old, full-grown man. And so I remember asking my doctor, hey, so how long will it be until I can run again? And I'll never forget how uncomfortable he got. And he said, uh, not for a very, very long time. And I I could tell what he was really saying, which is that I was never going to run again. And, um, you know, I have the same size foot as basically a five-year-old kid, and I'm six feet tall, 165 pounds, so by 165 pounds, I mean, like, that was 25 pounds ago, (laughs) actually, like, 190, Um, but it's a lot of weight for two tiny feet, and so from those early days after the coma, um, until I got sober, doctors gave me basically anything I wanted for pain. They felt sorry for me, and so I spent probably a good 10 years just getting sucked into opioid hell uh, to go along with my already pre-existing alcohol problems. And so fast forward to 2008 when I got sober, chronic pain was one of the biggest things that kept me from going to rehab. I just didn't think it was possible to manage pain, real pain, without painkillers or something to take the edge off. And, you know, about 20 million Americans have chronic pain, so I'm one of many. Um, But even at the very, very bottom of my addiction, I knew I couldn't keep going the way I was, but I needed something, some solution to the pain problem. And at rehab, I remember haggling with my counselors to please let me use Ambien, at least something to help me sleep. I just kept saying, I'm not going to be able to sleep, you know, it's bad enough, my feet hurt. Um, and that's a pretty common thing. I've, in my experience, you know, three of the biggest reasons that people struggle coming into recovery is that, um, you know, that they can't sleep, that they have pain, or that they think recovery is going to be boring. And I thought all three of those things. So my counselors ended up not letting me take anything for sleep. And you know what? A couple days into it, Without any pills or booze, I I settled into a pretty good sleep pattern. So it was cool to break through that barrier. Um, And then when it came to my feet, I did struggle for a few weeks to to figure out how to handle pain. And the truth is, the truth is I do have significant pain problems with my feet, and I always will. Airports, amusement parks, long lines of any kind, those are hard for me. And I end up in a lot of pain, and I just... I had a long weekend with my family, and I'm actually in a lot of pain right this very moment, and it causes me to lash out and do a lot of other things um, that I just, they're not very sober behaviors, but I do the best I can. One of the things about not having pills and booze in my body is I actually have figured out a way to gauge and manage my pain in a reasonable way. Um, You know, the way I used to do things was crazy. You know, it was a little bit like... You know, you blow a tire when you're driving on the highway, and instead of pulling over and calling for help, you decide to turn the radio up so you don't hear the tire rattling around anymore. (laughs) That is not a good long-term solution for your tire, and it's not a good solution for managing pain for me. What I realized was that without being in a haze, I, I got to know my feet a lot better. I got to understand my body a lot better. And guess what? Uh... 60 Vicodin a day with a six pack of beer and sleeping pills, that's not very good uh, for a relationship between somebody and their body. And I do need to have that. That's a great word, relationship. It means I have to have constant communication, constant listening, constant learning 
about my body. And again, that's like a good relationship, right? So now I've learned what the what my body's trying to tell me. And in return, I found that I'm able to ask my body for a lot more. So for example, remember how I told you my doctor said I wouldn't run for a very, very long time? He was right. But around the beginning of the pandemic, I thought, you know, nobody ever actually told me I couldn't run, like not even close. And so last March, I started jogging a little bit, a minute or two every day. And then I got up to two or three minutes, then four or five minutes, then 10, then 15 minutes. And that's about my maximum. But I'm able to run almost every day now. It's pretty awesome. And, you know, listen, if you ever saw me running, it's not a pretty picture. I I kind of like lurch along one foot in front of the other, kind of like my sobriety. But I recently ran for 30 minutes and I was exhausted. Uh, (laughs) If you were looking, you would have seen a smile on my face because it was a spiritual experience. A sweaty, gross, huffing and puffing spiritual experience But those are the best kinds of spiritual experiences, aren't they? Thanks for letting me share.